Well, hello. Welcome back to my workshop. I'm Chris Walton, being a craftsman, and on this episode of Being a Craftsman DIY, we're going to make a paper towel holder. So stick around. So this paper towel holder is something that is very useful to put into your workshop or your garage. You could even put it into your kitchen, but it may not suit the uh, decor of your kitchen. For this project, you're going to need these items. And also, you might need some of these tools. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download the template off of my website. This will give you the template for the sides and also some additional information. And now taking our stock board, we're going to trace out this template onto the board. And we're going to do that two times because one will be one side and one will be the other side. If you want to, you could actually print the same plans twice, cut the template out, and then glue it to the board so that it's easier for you to cut. And then our next step is to go ahead and cut this out on our bandsaw and then trace out and copy and do the exact same thing again for the other side. Okay, so for those of you who've watched my show before or if you've watched any of my videos before, you've seen me do this technique using tape to make these um, stay together so that when you sand it, they end up being identical to one another. But if you haven't seen that trick or that tip, I'm going to show you really quickly. So this trick is um, very handy, comes in handy really well when you want to make two boards be identical. You can do this prior to um, cutting these. That's also another ideal thing you can do. Um, but for the most part, get them pretty close to what you want. And then when you go to sand it, you'll be able to take care of all those imperfections. And pine is a pretty simple thing to do. So all I'm doing is uh, taking some painter's tape or masking tape and looping it to create a double-sided tape. Uh, you could try double-sided tape. You could also use hot glue and that works just as well. But what you want to do is make sure you've got the block that we marked on originally on the top so that you know where to make this one inch hole and then just line it up as best as you can. All right, and just give it a good push. Now that should pretty well lock together and what that'll do is when we go to sand this It'll just sand them all nice and even and nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sand this on my belt sander, but you can use a palm sander. You can do it by hand if you really wanted to. Um, it will just take you a little bit longer, but if you have some sort of tool to help you sand, use that and get it all nice and smooth. Once you get them pretty nice and smooth, you can go ahead and detach them and actually kind of give a nice round over to all the edges. And one thing you'll notice, and I already just said it, I just messed myself up because I only marked one board for this one inch hole. So what I'm going to have to do is cut that hole and then just line them up, put my drill bit down through it just to get it to just barely touch and put an indentation in the next board and then cut through that one. And I'll do that with a one inch Forstner bit. Okay, so before we move on from this, um, I wanted to make mention, you might have just noticed that there was a board underneath the hole that I was cutting. Now, if you're unfamiliar with drill presses and the, um, the art of drilling a hole through a board, when you put a board behind it, you kind of create what you, we call a backboard. And what that does is it prevents chip out. And let me show you what I mean by that. So here's our two boards. And I intentionally cut one in a place where my backboard wasn't right up against the board. And so what happens is you get chip out. And you see how this looks chipped right there? It's pretty nasty. In fact, there's a bad gash there. You can really tell there. So once you put the board against nice and tight, what you end up with is a lot better of a hole. You don't have any chip out. So that's something you always want to do 
whether or not you're using a drill press or just a drill. Okay, now we're just gonna go ahead and set those aside, but now we're gonna take the rest of the stock that we have and we're gonna cut it to be 13 inches long by four and a half wide. Now we're at the step here where I've done some sanding on this and I've got it all cut to what I want. This would be the time you would want to decide if you're going to stain this or you're going to finish at the end. I'm actually going to just go ahead and finish this at the end with some um, just some Danish oil, just something to give it some protection, but not a lot because um, I really just like the look and color of this. But what we want to do now is take a drill and then a 1 8 inch drill bit, something that's just slightly smaller then your drywall screw. So we're gonna take our pencil and the one side, hold it and make it flush, and just draw a little line. This is gonna give us a guide to know where we wanna go with our holes. Now I'm not left-handed, so this is definitely a little harder on this side. I do that. And then now to make the hole, I'm gonna put a little backboard behind it, and then just drill straight through. We're gonna do two of these. And then same thing on the other side. So at this point, we're going to take our screws and just get them started. Now we'll switch it to our drill Phillips bit and just drive these in a little bit. You know, we don't want to go too far because what we're going to do. Let's just use these to just barely poke through the other side. In fact, at this point, take a little screwdriver and, and just make them so that they peek out enough. This is going to help us align these other boards for the sides perfectly. Okay, place your board upside down take an end. Now you will notice that uh, <laughs> somehow I ended up with that line there. So we'll take this side, try to line up that edge as good as you can. Then just give it a little tap with a hammer or a mallet. And now we've got two little holes to drill a little bit more with our eighth inch drill bit. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So let's get our drill bit right to that hole. Just drill in a little bit more. I would go to say maybe three quarters of an inch. The screws that I'm using are actually two inch screws, the two inch drywall screws. Now some of you people out there watching this right now might be saying, why are you putting glue on end grain? And if you know a lot about wood, typically that is something you just don't want to do because you do not have a lot of strength when it comes to end grain. But with the screws, and with the fact we're actually butting up against the uh, long grain, we should be all right, just to have a little bit of something extra. And since I'm using pine, the screw heads pretty much sink themselves into the um, board, but you could also do a little bit of a counter sink using a, a chuck like this and just drill it to give room for the screw head to go into the wood without possibly snapping your board right in half. All right, so now at this point, we've got this pretty much ready to go. Uh, you can let it dry overnight if you wanted to, but with the screws, we're perfectly fine to continue with this project. Now we're gonna to wanna to grab the dowel rod that we have, and it's gonna be the one inch dowel rod, and you're gonna to wanna to cut it one inch longer than the entire width of your holder. And since you are making it with the plans that I've given you, that should be 14 inches. I happen to have a piece of dowel rod laying around, and it was actually already stained. And you know, it's kind of funny, it actually kind of is a nice contrast between the two different pieces of pine. So uh, this worked out pretty good. But the next thing you want to do is you want to take an inch and a quarter washer and then another screw and we're going to drill a tiny hole in the end of our dowel and you want to just, you know, it's okay to just eyeball it center 
just drill it as far as you can. And then we're going to take our washer, our screw, put them together, and then screw that onto the end of the board, but not all the way quite yet. All right, we've got it pretty much on there. It's still loose. What we want to do is make sure that we get it pretty much in the center and then just hand tighten it. So it should look something like this. So just like that, we're done. So all you got to do is take this, drill a couple holes through it again and put another drywall screw into whatever wall you're putting it into. You don't really need to worry about it being too sturdy of a wall. Um, it, most certainly if you're just doing drywall, you might want to put some anchors in it. But other than that, if you're in a workshop and you've got plywood on the walls or you're in a shop that you just know where the wood is, just mount it pretty much anywhere you want. But the way this works, it's quite simple. You take your old paper towel, you put it in the center, put your dowel on one side, push it through, all the way to the washer, hits the other side, there you go. Um, the sheer friction when you're pulling this is not going to cause the dowel to pull out. I've been using mine previously that I made before this one and I've never had it pull out. So you don't have to worry about that. So this is pretty much a complete project and successful, very simple to make. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Being a Craftsman DIY and hope to see you on the next episode right here in my workshop. Have a good day. And we're going to take our pen... Where's my pencil? So we're going to take our pencil...